This is Michael from the Seawood Group. I think often as PV professionals, we can really overcomplicate the troubleshooting of PV arrays. There's a lot of expensive equipment out there um, that can help us find a whole load of faults. Uh, but I wanted to show you some very simple techniques that you can use and apply in your day to day work to try and find out where faults are in a PV system. Um, so first of all, if we look at the typical uh, layout of a PV array, okay, and we can apply this to residential, commercial, even utility scale plants. So first of all, we're going to have an inverter somewhere, okay, and then from the inverter, we're either going to have maybe in Europe um, we call them obviously uh, uh, a DC isolator. Here in the States, it's a DC disconnect, so we may have a DC disconnect somewhere. Okay, and that might be underneath the inverter, or it might be to the side, whatever. And then also we may have a junction box. So typically, if we look at a residential system, the ones that I've been on anyway here in the States, the inverter might be on the side of the building, it might be down in the garage, it might even be on the rooftop, but then with the DC disconnect, and then maybe the, the cables run onto the rooftop, and we have the junction box, the little, the little boxes where all of the strings are combining. So then further from this, and please excuse my uh, crude drawing here, we're obviously going to have positive and negative here. So maybe then we have our solar panels, okay? So in this instance, let's say we have 10 panels. So here's your typical uh, setup for a PV system. So on the back of these panels, what we're going to have is we're going to have our STC values. All right, now STC is standard test conditions, which is 1000 watts per meter squared, 25 degrees C. Now we use Celsius because that's the industry standard. Okay, and that will be what is on the back of the panel. So if one of these panels is going to be 40 volts, then 10 of those panels, I should see 400 volts. Remember that figure. Now, this is also affected by cell temperature. So the temperature is actually going to bring down the voltage. So if you're really above 25 degrees C, then you're going to have a slight um, change there in the overall voltage. And we can add in a temperature coefficient there if we need to. But I'm not trying to overcomplicate the math. Um, and also, maybe one of these panels is 10 amps ISC. Okay, so at short circuit current, at 1000 watts per meter squared, we should see 10 amps when we perform that test. Now, so if we were at 500, we would see 5 amps. If we were at 250 watts per meter squared, we would see 2.5 amps. So you can see that there's a ratio there in terms of the uh, watt per meter squared of the irradiance that's directly affecting the short circuit current. And as with the voltage, where we added a temperature coefficient, we would add in a power factor for the module, but for that purpose, for these purposes, we're going to keep that out. Okay, so what I call these are my expected values. Okay, so when I run a test with my instrument, I'm going to connect at some point here along the array, and when I read my results, I should have an idea in my head of what, what numbers I should see. Okay, and the only way to connect our expected values with our measured values is by using proper PV tools, such as an irradiance meter and a temperature probe. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to set our irradiance meter in line with the panels, so we're getting the same irradiance, and then we're going to put the cell temperature probe on the back, make sure that's away from the aluminum frame, aluminium if you're in Europe, away from the junction box, and so we're not getting any residual heat, and it needs to be in the center of a cell. Really easy to do. So, all that's well and good. So I have my expected value, so I have 10 panels, and let's say, for instance, it is 1,000 watts per meter, square, per meter squared. Okay, so we'll get rid of this. So when I run my test, my expected values, I should see, and this is a 1,000 watts per meter squared, 25 degrees Celsius, 
I should see 400 volts and I should see 10 amps. Okay, that's what I'm expecting to see when I run my test. So now we have to look at the point of connection. So this is maybe on the ground floor. So let's start at the inverter, okay? So we're gonna come here, we're gonna shut down the inverter properly. We're gonna let any residual capacitance dissipate so it doesn't feed back into our instrument and blow the fuse. And we're gonna run a test here at the bottom of the inverter. So we're gonna get our PV150 or PV210, a solar utility pro, and we're gonna run a test here, okay? Now, if I run a test here, and my measured values do not equal my expected values, I have a problem. So, so let's say we ran a test here, and I saw 400 volts, so I, there's no connection issues, but I actually only saw six amps, okay? So we've lost four amps somewhere. So somewhere in the string, we're losing that current, okay? Maybe it's the ground, an installation fault. So now I know there's a problem here, moving forward. So what I do now is, I come to the DC disconnect and I test, okay? And the problem is still there, 400 volts, six amps, still not in line with my expected values. So now I know the problem is not here, right? The problem is here. And then I run it at the junction box. 400 volts, six amps. I've still got a problem, okay? So now I come to the end of the string and I test here. And I see 400 volts, but it's jumped up to 10 amps, okay? So you see the difference there? We've gone from six to 10 with the readings on our radiance meter. Now I think, hold on a moment, this is exactly in line with my expected values. That means there is nothing wrong with this section of the array. The problem is from here to here, okay? So we've isolated this section of the array, now we know there's a problem, okay? So what we can do then is backtrack and look at this section while ignoring this section. So similarly, if my expected values, if my measured values here was still not what I expected, now I know the problem is in this section. So what do I do? I have 10 panels. I split them into five and five, okay? The voltage is gonna drop by half. The current is gonna stay the same, expected. So I test this five with my PV150, and this comes out at six amps. I test this half, and it comes out as 10 amps. Now I know the problem is in this half. So by segmenting the system and testing from the bottom up, we can actually determine where the problem is. So just to recap, calculate your expected values, compare them to your measured values, assess those values at each point in the system to isolate where the problem is. Nice and easy, nice and simple. We don't need a curve trace. We don't need anything like that. All we're taking is voltage, short circuit current, irradiance, and cell temperature. Now, if you wanted to delve a little bit further, you could use our PV200 or PV210 to do a point-to-point -point insulation resistance test. And bear in mind, the 150 will also give you the insulation resistance test. So that added benefit of that test can tell us a little bit more about where the faults are. So this is the basic concept of PV troubleshooting. Nothing over complicated, and this is how easy it can be. If you'd like to find out more about Seawood Test Solutions and the training we can provide you, please get in touch.